Listen, what changed? Let's focus on what really changed. One thing I said in the first video I did about this shoe was that Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we are looking again sort of at the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. I'm gonna update you on my thoughts after more than 100 kilometers with this shoe. Not with this one because I used the Kakizome colorway, the first one that released, uh, black and white, looking a bit uh, like a prototype. Now it's a colorway available to the public as well because it worked really, really well. So I, I have a hundred kilometers, mostly on the other shoe and also a bit on, on, on this one uh, that I got more recently. So I'm gonna update you on that. Uh, but first we wanted to share with you some images and some insights of our visit to um, Osaka, to Mizuno's HQ. Uh, so it's Mizuno HQ for the main building and then it's Mizuno the engine for the smaller R&D oriented building on Mizuno's facility. Very nice, so we, we got the opportunity to discover uh, the running museum featuring many, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to call it, Olympic apparel um, for Japanese, um, for the Japanese team, but also for other teams that, that were um, equipped by Mizuno. Lots, lots of shoes and quite interestingly, I think 300 shoes. So quite, quite fascinating stuff and very interesting to see the history of the brand, not just running, but also baseball, very, very strong in Japan, a very strong sport for, for Mizuno. Golf as well, uh, basketball, track and field. Um, so lots of lots of different things um, there. And then uh, Tim and I were um, given the opportunity to test the Wave Rebellion Pro on a very specific track at Mizuno in the engine building, a track that um, has, I think it's 14 infrared cameras um, measuring different motions in the shoe. In your body as well, they can put some sensors in your body. We only had the sensors put on our shoes. Um, unfortunately, we can't share the, the results of that um, test. It was really interesting and the results that um, you have now on, on your screen are those from, from other people. But that was very nice and, and we also managed to interview uh, Shinsuke. Let's listen to that and then I'm gonna share some um, 100K thoughts on the Wave Rebellion Pro. Let's go back to Osaka and let's chat with uh, Shinsuke. A couple of years ago, you decided to change a bit uh, the marathon shoes from, from Mizuno yep. and the whole wave line came to life, mm -hmm. uh, at least the racing the racing line. You yeah, can yeah, explain yeah. maybe a bit better mm -hmm. how this shoe worked for Tim and myself who, yep. who tested mm -hmm. compared to the Sonic, which we use as, as a baseline, uh, how this performed. Yeah, so as you said, uh, as you seen in the, uh, the result of the motion capture testing, so we can push and support the midfoot posture with this smooth speed assist. Extended midfoot height is yeah bigger than longer than other part of the shoe, yep. and this can support your heel posture. So in the high brace, so without smooth speed assist technology, so this extended midfoot after landing phase, so your heel is bottom down sinking. But so with this smooth speed assist extended midfoot, we can support the height of the heel. Motion. Do I understand well that the extended heel height yep. is then higher than 40 millimeters, but mm -hmm. a bit more towards the midfoot? Mm -hmm. What what stack height do we have here at the at this very point? <laughs> yeah, actually, that's yeah. So difficult to say, but more than uh, 50 millimeter. <laughs> 52, right? I heard. Yeah, yeah that's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this really creates that sensation of like going forward that's right. and you mentioned something very important using less the calf muscles yeah, 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 that's to right. save a bit the energy from the small yeah. muscles and pushing more with the with the yes. hips with the glutes yeah. uh, to save that energy on the on yeah. the marathon that's right so in the testing we found that so we can save the energy of muscle calf muscle and so you they can use you try that save the energy for their final sprint and in the race and in the testing. Okay. Yeah. And in the Wave family, you have the Sonic, this one, there is the Flash in between, yeah, and then the Pro. Mm -hmm. um, how would you use the shoes yourself? Ah, so for myself. So actually, so I love the Pro <laughs> much more than other two brothers. Okay. So cause a little bit different sensation from the other shoes. But when we I do the training for the speed day, so I use a Flash. So that has a very good responsiveness. Okay. Then, yeah, this shoe. Very to farm, but very responsiveness. And the Sonic is good for the easy day. Yeah, very soft feeling is good for the easy day. 
perfect. So Shinsuke told us quite some things, and I think one of them that I want to um, highlight in this video, how this shoot achieved to get a uh, higher stack height than 40 millimeters in the heel, or not really in the heel, um, that's the whole trick compared to, um, you know, in, in line with World Athletics regulation while still being legal. So this is very interesting. So if you look at, if you look closely at World Athletic regulation, the shoe stack height in the forefoot and in the heel are measured at very specific points. In the forefoot, it's measured at 12% um, of the length of the shoe. So imagine the shoe is, uh, you know, has a 100% length. And so you take 12% of that length, you reach a point somewhere here in the forefoot, and that's where you measure the um, stack height in the forefoot. And then for the heel, you do the same at 75% of the length of the shoe, so somewhere, you know, around here. Now, the interesting thing is that it's measured, first of all, it's measured at the center of the shoe. So I think that's that could be one trick, um, having that huge, you know, uh, groove here in the in the middle, that huge void here could be one, one way to alleviate um, the uh, 40 millimeter rule. And I think if you look closely on the, um, on the shoe list on the World Athletic website, you can even find the Hoka Mac 4. I think there was a funny thing that Ivan from the Meta Endurance team noticed like one year ago and, and we had a chat about it. The Mac 4 is track legal because if you measure it where, where, where the groove is, it actually doesn't have the, the 20 millimeters of stack height. Something like that, you can go figure it out and we can chat about it in the comments. I'm not sure I'm absolutely right about it. For this shoe here, so Shunsuke mentioned that the shoe has a 52 or 55 millimeters of stack height in the heel, but it's listed at 39.5 on their website and it's World Athletic approved. So, you know, crazy stuff here. Very interesting, of course, and um, it's a nice, you know, way of making shoes legal, uh, despite them having more than 40 millimeters of stack height. My thoughts about the shoe after 100 kilometers. Listen, what changed? Let's focus on what really changed. Um, I know many, many people, or at least a few uh, people in the Met Endurance team had issues with the fit. I never had any issue with the fit with this shoe, despite doing a 30 kilometer long run for the Tokyo Marathon build in this shoe. It's not too narrow. It's not... Um, it's actually really, really fine. And this is my true to size, 11. The Kakizome colorway that I had, the black and white was 11 and a half. And I, I would go to true to size. I'm realizing that I'm, I may have narrow fits because many shoes that are considered as being a bit narrow don't really bother me or are you know on the edge of bothering me. So this is something I'm maybe discovering for myself. Um, who knows? Having tried now a bit, you know, more shoe, super shoes in 2023, of course, I know, I know some super shoes from the past, but every year things are, are different. The fit isn't one of my favorites, um, but it's a good fit. So, you know, it's like a six, seven out of 10, which is, which is solid. One thing I said in the first video I did about this shoe was that I would consider racing in it and I still would consider racing in it, but probably more on the half marathon distance because it takes a bit too much out of me on the, um, you know, on longer runs and at marathon pace for a full marathon, if that makes sense. I love this shoe at marathon pace for training, but I'm not sure I could sustain 42 kilometers in it uh, during a marathon. That being said, I really love, and I'm convinced now, this is something that I mentioned in the first video, I'm convinced that it forces me, or at least it, you know, it asks you to strike at a very specific point somewhere here, you can really feel it under your foot. It's actually quite pleasant. And then it rolls very nicely forward, saving some energy for me. But, you know, some people in the Meta Endurance team, you can read the, um, the multi-tester comparison on the website, thought it may be a bit too demanding on their legs. I think it works for me, but that may be, you know, very... Um, specific thing depending on, on who you are and how you run. The grip is absolutely, you know, top-notch, world-class grip, maybe on par, if not better, with Puma grip, which is really my golden standard. And I think for many people, um, one of the best grips they tried. Once, once you try Puma grip, you cannot forget about it. And this is really, really, really good. It doesn't show much signs of wear. If any, it would be on the on the medial side of the um, of the midsole here, which you know is a bit like not I wouldn't say falling apart, but it shows some signs of, of wear. Um, but that that's it. Is it a shoe that I would recommend? Yes, but 
you need to be a midfoot striker or like a, a heel striker with, with a very, very fast transition to midfoot. And you need to accept to have your foot strike maybe altered a bit, changed a bit uh, in order to strike exactly here where the shoe wants you to strike, kind of. You also need, I would say, to consider racing faster times. This shoe is marketed as uh, being for sub 230 runners. I believe that I could benefit from it and I'm certainly nowhere near being a sub 230 marathon runner, but I, you know, I don't think this shoe would work for people running a four or five hours marathon. Uh, that's essentially what I'm saying here. Whereas other super shoes may benefit them. Yeah, if you wanna know more about this shoe and if you wanna com compare it, uh, see how it compares at least for me against other super shoes in 2023, there's the ultimate running uh, shoe comparison that I will put somewhere here on the screen. I hope you enjoyed this, thoughts after 100 kilometers. Thanks for watching, enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one, bye-bye.